Praise God. You may be seated. Um, this morning, uh, I am uh, teaching on uh, the importance uh, of blood and our, our scripture uh, text and um, the context of this text I'll explain but it's Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 4 of course this is the faith chapter uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and verse 4 And it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, being dead still speaks. Okay. All right. As far as the offering goes, you can. Yeah, you were good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just told you to pass it around. Oh, I'll I'll get read the text. Um, The, the importance of this is, I know it's out of the long road or something. The importance of the blood, and, and there's a couple of aspects of the scripture, and uh, of course, uh, we know New Testament. We're going to go to those. Um, scriptures that you know tell us about uh, the importance of the blood of Christ uh, too many of us have not taken maybe seriously but we can get sidetracked a lot of times and I want to concrete it a little bit more within our hearts and minds because blood sacrifice was extremely important. We find it in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, that the Lord did something. Uh, the Lord made coats of skin. And I have mentioned this portion of scripture uh, before. But Adam and Eve tried to sew together, put together, uh, scripture tells fig leaves to cover themselves because they, they knew that they were naked. A lot of questions have come across. Well, was it, you know, uh, not seeing themselves as, you know, being naked? What, or, you know, was her eyes hidden from it? All this kind of stuff. Uh, one thing that we find in scripture is the covering of God. Um, the angels cover themselves with their wings. All right, it shows this on the Ark of Covenant, even. That's about covering. Covering has many aspects about it. But in the biblical aspect, okay, you know, blood goes along with covering. Covering goes along with blood. Okay, and we're going to talk about this. 
Now, I'm not going to be able to do all of this in one session, but I'm going to do a series here on the blood and the importance of the blood. And these are things that we need to look at. All right. Could had Adam and Eve uh, been covered by some sort of glory? Um, my, su my suggestion to that concerning what I see in the Bible and what talks about the angels when it talks about the um, it talks about heaven itself you know God's realm and it talks about it uh, how similar it is to uh, what I can what we can say is uh, it's, it's similar to what What we see in Isaiah and the New Testament, there's a lot going on about this covering. All right. The blood was sprinkled, okay, for the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement was that all the sins, okay, of the children of Israel were going to be covered. All right, by the blood. You understand that? Okay, let me explain it before we read a lot of scriptures. Okay, um, I need to build a foundation. Okay. Um, Let me make it even more basic. Uh, anybody that works in a certain important field usually has some sort of uniform. We call it a uniform. Okay. Uh, we call it a certain dress. Okay. Uh, many times it has to do with the uh, criticalness of what they're involved in. You hear me? Got that? A soldier cannot, you know. Show up, right? Uh, and you know, just be in any kind of dress. Uh, when you know, when it's time, when Reveille's called, all those different things that they have to do, it, it is time to get suited up. It's time to look a certain way. Okay. Um, that's different than a battle dress. Okay. Many times, a battle dress, many times, is even a bit more involved with covering due to safety reasons and all that. Um, you know, depending what they're doing, depending where they're going, depending who they are, okay, and uh, what is uh, the situation. And so I'm trying to get across to you that covering has always been something that God designed and man has incorporated it. Okay, 
not where he should have most of the time, but it is a something that is very important. So when I talk about the blood, we always talk about how the blood covers our sins and washes away our sins. Yes. I mean, we sing songs about it. It's a doctrinal norm to us. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to see, you know, the great importance of that. Again, Genesis 3.21, the Lord basically institutes okay sacrifice by killing an animal and providing the skins for Adam and Eve you know uh, the coats or tunics all right uh, would be one of the ways to Describe it. Okay. It was a covering. Because of their sin, the covering that they had previous to that is gone. In other words, sin reveals itself. Okay. Um, this is why we see several things talked about the covering throughout the bible this is why we see certain things practiced by the priests why when they go to offer sacrifice first in the tabernacle you know and then uh, when the temple was built in the days of solomon this was also practiced, okay, because it was laid out that way in the scripture. Okay. And we're used to seeing, uh, you know, uh, uniforms. The police use them actually. If they pull you over, they have to have their uniform on. Okay. Um, uh, they they have to have that on because if they're out of the uniform, basically, um, they don't have a right to arrest you. <laughs> In fact, you can contend, contend that um, if they're not in uniform, they have to be in some sort of regulation uniform. That's the way the law is. There has been people who have been beat tickets because the officer uh, didn't have part of his uniform and that was noticed by people who understand some of the details of the law and they were able to get out of pain and fine because he was not in his official state law is important okay we we uh, uh in our day we've we've taken a lot of things and just kind of cast them away as one you know things that are not important but in God's eyes this covering all right that the blood makes because it again it is sprinkled on the mercy seat in other words the blood that was shed at that brazen altar was taken and put and put in the censer. Okay. And that that blood was was carried uh, 
through the tapper. Okay. Incense uh, uh, were again, uh, I'm going to say, at the altar of incense, re checked, energized, all these different things, which that was done on a daily basis. But when it came to the sprinkling of the blood on the mercy seat, okay, it was very, very, very important. There's a lot of different viewpoints on, you know, why Cain and Abel's sacrifices, uh, you know, why Cain's wasn't accepted. Some people say, well, it's solely because it wasn't blood. What Hebrews tells us, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. It says, now when we look at it and we read the story of it, it was, in other, in other words, he offered the first fruits of his flock. In other words, the very, 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 very best. Okay, that he had. Cain just brought from the field. There's two aspects of this because, listen to me, grain, grain was a part of some of the things that you brought to the Lord. Okay. <laughs> They call it, when you read the King James, it says meal offering. Right? But that's a grain offering. Now, the, the also the importance is here is able, focused really on the right thing. He did the best of the best. Cain did it. And it does focus away from the blood. And it does focus away from the best. He just gave. The importance of our giving to the Lord is the first. The best. So many of us do not do that. The whole idea of salvation is not going through ceremonies that you join a club, the God club, that makes you part of the God club. That's the way religion performs it today. Mm -hmm. But that was not the essence of its meaning. It doesn't mean the same thing to us today. We get caught, we get caught up in, in, in a lot of times. Uh, You know, the ceremonial part. And, you know, people come come in and, you know, it's, and, and it's traditionally over years uh, due to, how can I say, uh, the Catholic imprint on our minds of all this, where, you know, there's, you know, there's big celebrations, okay, and family, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> baptism can be on the backside of a desert in a oasis where there's just two of you there.
okay, Ethiopian eunuch, Philip, was translated. In other words, Star Trek has nothing on the Lord. Okay? He was being theirs, you know, whatever you want to call it. We use the word translated. Explain what happened, but Philip was here, and then all of a sudden he's over there, miles and miles and miles away. You get that? Yes. That's the miraculous. But there's just two people there. We get caught up in all this stuff and what's important is what it is about okay it's it's you say well that's an important event you know all that kind of stuff past year telling you. See, this is how the blood's applied. And we're going to study about that. Okay? I'm just kind of giving an overview so that when we get into the details, you're going to have an understanding. In the King James Version, the blood's mentioned 447 times. Think about that. That just kind of blows you away. It's talked about so much in the Old, Old Testament. Before you get through the whole uh, through the book of the law, you have over 300 mentions blood. You would think that God has something he's trying to get across to us. Not only that, you know, we read, you know, Exodus. All right. You know, you've read through your Bible, the Old Testament, five books, we call the first five books. You know, and it's called the Pentateuch, and you know that's that's kind of uh, you know how we mention it today. It's it's the law, you know, the first part of the law. You with, you with me? Yes. <laughs> but the importance of the blood and the sacrifice and the blood is huge. Okay, we got Genesis mentioning it, and it seems to have this increase. We have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. What happened to Israel is important too, because the Lord was saying through the prophets. He said, the whole thing behind the blood, the whole thing about why you were doing the blood, and they had lost it because they were just brain blood. In other words, it was more of a thing of celebration, the thing that you did, thing that got everybody together, la, 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 it's a party. And all this kind of stuff is it something that, that's wrong to celebrate. No, it's not wrong to celebrate, but if it's not making a change in you, don't do it. Amen. 
if it doesn't have a meaning of putting yourself out there as that sacrifice and giving the Lord your whole life, don't do it. You did it amiss. You missed the whole idea, the whole meaning of baptism. It's not about joining a church and being by a part of a certain religion because you did it a certain way. Though that will separate you in the day that we live in. But in the, in the past, there was, there was the Christian, uh, you know, what the church was, was it was about something totally different. You were embarking on understanding the importance of the blood of Christ, that you need the blood of Christ. And that you die out to self. You die. Romans chapter 6 spends so much time with this. Paul's trying to get across to these, you know, to these heathens. The reason and the importance of why you were baptized. Because those Gentiles didn't get it either. He was trying to tell them that was more than just a ceremony you'd go through to join Christianity. And to get your free ticket, free meal ticket to heaven. Because it's not free. It's going to cost you something. Like David says, how can I offer unto God that which cost me? It's not acceptable if I, if I do that. So baptism encompasses everything that we are. It, I see it and I can perceive it. You know, in the apostolic movement, where we're, we're doing this for all the wrong reasons. And there's a lot of people who just don't get it. who won't get it because they have seen so many other people around them and how the influence, the influences that are around them, they see it, um, you know, Catholic church, you know, they, they have to do their catechism, go through their catechism. And then, you know, once they go through catechism, uh, see catechism is a training time, training period. They have to go through classes, right? In other words, they have to learn. Catechism is the process of learning to be a Catholic. You with me? Lutherans do it. The Episcopals used to do it. Okay. You know, Church of England used to do it. All these different things. Now there's there's some good things about you know doing this, but it was all about becoming part of that entity or that church 
That qualifies you to be a good Lutheran, to be a good Catholic, to be a good Episcopal, to be a good Anglican. La la la. You with me? Again, I'm just giving an overview. All these things are important. Now, when we get into a lot of scripture, you know, you'll be reading a lot. I kind of laid down the this that the blood of Jesus is important. The reason we're baptized is important. Okay. Jesus' blood was shed. Now, somebody could turn to Romans chapter 6 and read verses 1 through 4. Who's willing to get out there and do that? Go ahead. Sister. Is it Romans chapter 6? Chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace <laughs> may abound? God forbid, how shall we, that we are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as we were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? <clears throat> Therefore, we are very good with him by baptism in, into death, that like as Christ was, raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Okay. Hmm. okay. When we go back in the Old Testament, the Lord was tired of the sacrifice. Because they were giving sacrifices and they were going through the rituals and not meeting. I'm going to say it became a program, a show. Something that we show off to the Gentiles, that we show off to our, uh, you know, our Jewish brother. It was supposed to be brought in the concept of change. If that concept is lost and it just becomes a ritual, as it did for the Jews that they go through, the Lord, it just stinks in his nostrils. And Paul's bringing up basically the same thing because if you read from Um, you know, chapter three of Romans. And, uh, you know, let's go there. Uh, and let's, you know, just go ahead and turn our Bibles uh, to the third chapter. And I think 
too many times we have overlooked the importance of our decision to be baptized. And what it was supposed to mean to us. And what it actually means to the Lord. Um, there has been, uh, like I said, a lot of things that's happened from the time that Jesus uh, was crucified until the present. <laughs> There was a lot of ideas and a lot of things that were put out there, you know, and ritualism has been a substitute for sacrifice. Uh, who will read Romans chapter? I'm going to go with chapter three here. You can put your finger there. Uh, Romans. Uh, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Can do it? Go ahead. Okay, it's supposed to transform you, offer our bodies. Okay. One thing we're applying the blood and the other part of this concept is for living because of the blood. Because we are covered with the blood. Um, we have, you know, something that has to be important to us, okay, is that, you know, the blood that covers us. Jesus Christ. There is another aspect of a baptism. There is another aspect of the blood. Okay, and that is called circumcision. You may have heard of circumcision. Okay. Right? Circumcision was a way of separating us. Now, Paul, in, this, in the second chapter of Romans, there again, he's talking about the uncircumcision and the circumcision and how that makes you, you know, a Jew in the eyes of the Jews. But see, this is what it became. It became a ritual that the Jews do. Right. And it really was not a covenant. The whole Bible is about covenant, not dispensations. It's about covenant. Let me say this again. The whole Bible is about covenant. 
covenant. Not dispensations. Dispensationalism has been a way that we use to explain certain things, but it's not the way the word put his word together. Four ideas come. <coughs> Now, we're going to break here and to get ready for a next uh, service. So, circumcision. So, this is the things that you know, want you to, to look at. And uh, that we, we find in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 21. And I'm going to read a few verses. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being just justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to, to be the a propitiation, that words, the payment, the leveling of the field, basically, through faith in his. Blood. That's verse 25. In his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. All right, through faith in his blood. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Faith in his blood. Actually, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 11 gives us that indication. But uh, we're going to start really getting into scripture, okay? Um, and you can read about circumcision. Okay, uh, Galatians uh, is, is another first two chapters, all these different things that was important um, to God, and it should be important to us, and what it means, not in just technically knowing it. You can technically know something and do something. Okay. But if you know something and that something changes you and makes you do something because of that change, then it's meaningful. Okay, I will break here. Next 